Chef Colin Roach here. Today I'm going to be making sous vide pork carnitas, which is Mexico's version of pulled pork that I'm going to be putting into some tortillas. Now traditionally, this is made uh, by cubing up the pork, covering it in lard, and simmering it in a low oven for a long time. So it gets tender and it gets crisp on the outside. And the home cook, we would just put it into a baking dish in cubes. Uh, we would put our, some fat on it, again, slow cook it. But today I'm gonna be using sous vide. It's gonna come out just as delicious and it's gonna be easy because I don't have to have the oven on all day. I don't have to watch it. Really no risk of it overcooking. And it's still gonna come out just as tender, just as delicious. As you can see behind me, I have my ANOVA going and I'm gonna be putting our pork into that in just a minute and cooking it. Uh, 24 hours or so, and then we're going to be making it into our tortillas. So this is going to be wonderful. So let's get started. All right, so now we're going to make some sous vide pork carnitas. And as you can see here, I'm going to have all my ingredients on the table. I also have a recipe, which I'm going to post at the end of this video, in case you want to make it yourself, so I can refer to that. So what we're going to start out with is we need a, a pork uh, shoulder, a Boston butt it's called. You see this different times. You want about, for this recipe, about four pounds boneless uh, pork shoulder. This one happens to have a bone in it, so I'm gonna take the bone out. Either way, it's, it's easy to do. And this is really cheap. Watch for them when they're on sale. This one's about six and a half pounds with the bone in it, so it should give me about four when I'm done. And it costs like $1.60, $1.70 a pound. So this whole thing is like $10 or $11. So it's great. And you'll see at the end, we're going to have lots of it. And for this recipe, as I mentioned, you're looking for like four pounds, five pounds of boneless to put in there. You could easily cut this recipe in half if you wanted to, but why? You're already going through the motions and this freezes really well. So you could divide it up, freeze it, and pull it out when you want it and just go ahead and make tacos, make nachos, make your tortillas, whatever you want with this pork when it's done. So going through the motions, cooking it for that 24 hours to 48 hours, might as well make the big batch. Okay, so I also have, uh, as it says in here, some onion. I've got about one onion, medium to small onion that I'm gonna put into the marinade. I also have garlic, four to six cloves or so. I've already chopped it up. You know, but if you want more, just add more in. You know, if you like any of these ingredients, switch it up. I'm gonna give you some options, but this is the one that I'm using. So I've got, you know, again, four or five cloves in here, kind of rough chopped, doesn't really matter. It's gonna be in the marinade. So I also have, um, I'm gonna put in dried oregano. I'm gonna put in some cumin. You could also put in, you know, so I got some smoked uh, chipotle here ground. I also have some chili powder. Some recipes you'll see have cinnamon sticks in it, which is fine if you want. I'm also gonna put lime juice in it and actually the limes. But you'll see some recipes have oranges in it, which I love to do. I'll cut up some oranges and throw that in, which adds another, you know, citrus flavor in the blend. So so feel free to experiment. I'm also going to throw in a couple of bay leaves all right, into this marinade. So when we do this, and that's going to put it all together. And lastly, I've got a bunch of salt. Salt's very important. Helps the pork hold in the moisture and also gives flavor. It's a seasoning while it's cooking. So we're going to put some salt in there. All righty. So let's start with the pork first. Okay, so like mentioned, we have this Boston butt or this pork shoulder here. And it has the bone in it. We're gonna cube it up anyway into like two inch by two inch pieces. It'll help cook better and it also the flavors will blend. So we're gonna cut it up. So you don't have to be really fancy getting those bones out of it, just cut it. But try to get as much meat, obviously, uh, off the bones as you can. Um, and then you're gonna end up with, like I said, about four pounds left over. So you can see the bone kind of runs along here, comes along the backbone. So take your knife, I've got a boning knife. I'm just gonna cut down along the bone here. And cut it out. And then come in around this bone on the back side. Pull it up and over. So you can buy this boneless. It's a little bit more per pound. 
Uh, but if you don't want to uh, be cutting this bone out, you find it too difficult or you know, have no use for it, then uh, certainly buy it boneless. It'll be easier for you to do, but it's really not hard to get this bone out. And if you can find one with a smaller bone in it, you know, it ends up being a little bit cheaper for you. So we're going to come down around this part here. You see it's separating pretty nicely. Come down along this part. And then on the back side here. And then we just cut it loose. Okay. So we have our bone here. Left a little bit of meat there. Not too much, but we got the bone pretty good. And there's a little bit of fat down in here, which we don't really need. So put that off to the side. So now we have it opened up. I can just follow the seam here. And cut this. Again, we want to make it into... You know two inch chunks or so so don't have to be very fancy with it because all of this uh, connective tissue it's actually collagen is what's going to break down with slow moist heat that'll all turn into gelatin and it'll get very tender and it's going to actually blend into the meat and become very tender so we don't really have to worry about like we were making a, a stew or something we want to seam all of that out we just leave it i'm going to cut this one one more time okay Got some smaller pieces here. Good. And one more on this side. And this is good because this is about the right size where I'm going to be able to coat it. I guess that's bigger than two, three, four inches. So chunk it up. And all of this flavor is going to get blended in and absorbed while it's cooking. Now, some recipes you'll see that says to marinate them or put a dry rub on them, let them sit overnight. You can certainly do this, but because this is going to cook for, you know, 24 hours, 36 hours, it's going to end up absorbing all those flavors at the same time. Okay, so we have our meat done. Now let's make our marinade. Okay, so that we have our meat already uh, chopped up, cubed up, two inches or so, roughly. Now we're going to just kind of put them, not really a marinade, but the ingredients together. We could just throw it all into our sous vide bag, but it may not distribute evenly. So I like to pre-mix it. So I just have a bowl here. We have our garlic, like I said, four to six cloves in there. If you like more or less, adjust. I got a small medium onion, rough chop. Again, put that into your bowl. Um, then I'm going to put in some bay leaves. Uh, bay leaves here, put two of them in. I like to break them. If you smell them, they don't really have much smell to them, but if you break them and then smell them, they give you a little bit more of that. So I think breaking them only in half, I don't like to crumble them because it makes it easy to remove later on if they're still in rather large pieces, but cutting them in half does help. Throw those in there. And then we have some cumin, about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. Again, just as you like. I'm going to put a little bit of chipotle in there just to give it a little bit of smoky flavor in there, which is kind of nice. And then we have oregano. I like oregano, the dried oregano. It's classic in here, but put as much as you want. Again, I think I put a half teaspoon in the recipe. And then I'm going to put a little chili powder just because I like that too. But as mentioned, you could put some uh, cinnamon in there. Some people even put cloves. I think they're a little too strong, but you can put cloves, whatever you like uh, in there. And then I'm going to put salt, but rather than put salt in here, you know, into our mix, I'm going to actually salt the meat in just a minute. And then we're going to put our lime juice. Um, you'll notice I don't have any fat. And traditionally it's cooked with lard or fat in the oven, but we don't need it because since it's gonna be cooked in that bag, its own fat from the meat's gonna break down and that's gonna provide that, that moisture and then turn into that gelatin and give it that richness, that delicious flavor that we're looking for. So here's a trick with some limes. Um, you know, lime's pretty hard. So if you're gonna to try to juice that, it's going to be, you know, hard to get all of that juice out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to roll it. I've already rolled these, you know, you just put it on the board and you roll it with your hand so it gets soft inside. All those um, little vestibules inside there in those segments, they're going to be loose. So you can see, I don't know if you can catch that on the camera, but this is pretty squishy, right? As opposed to this one, which I haven't done, it's very hard. So I'm going to get a lot more juice by just rolling it first. And I've rolled all of these. Look at that one. It's like a marshmallow. It's so soft. I'm going to get a lot more juice than this one. But in just a minute, this will be the same. Again, using the heel, rolling it on your board, moving it all different sides. It's going to break down all those sections inside the lime, which is going to allow the juice to come out. So then we just have to cut them in half or, or quarters would be good. You know, either way. 
and we're gonna squeeze them in here. You can do it by hand, but there's also a lot of, you know, juicing tools out there that you could utilize, which I'll show you in just a minute here. Now, I'm not gonna throw these away. I'm actually gonna put these into the bag while it cooks, which is gonna provide a lot more flavor. So here's that juicer, put it in like that, give it a squeeze, and then it pours it right out. And you get a lot more juice out of it that way. Um, you don't really have to be as precision in this because even the juice that's in here is not gonna be wasted. It's going to be put into the sous vide bag. So I'm not too worried about it, okay? So we're gonna put these other limes through here and then we're gonna be finishing our marinade. Okay, so now we've got our flavor marinade made with our limes and, and our garlic and onions and our seasonings and it's all mixed in. So now we're just gonna combine it with the meat. We're gonna put it into our sous vide bags. Now, sometimes if I'm cooking at a low temperature for short amounts of time, like a chicken breast for an hour or a steak for an hour or two, you know, you could use a typical, you know, gallon storage bag, that's fine. But for any long cooks, you know, this is gonna be 24 hours, you can go up to 48 hours. You're gonna want something a little bit more durable. So I like to use sous vide bags. And this brand I found, Sous Vide Supreme, is pretty good. Again, the same thing, but you can tell they're much thicker. You know, they're a little bit bigger. And they, they come in gallon, they come in quart. I buy both, depending on what I'm doing for a cooking. And this one, um, I get them, I think, online. You can just Google them and find them. They have them in some stores, too. And it's not, it's pretty reasonable. So. Uh, I'm going to use that for today's bag. Now, another tip is before you fill it with anything, it's going to get all kind of messed up on the outside, and then it goes into your water and it gets sucked up into your immersion circulator and stuff. So one trick is just like you would with a pastry bag before filling it, just to fold down the edges and open it up. So you can see I have the edges over here. So then if I do touch this part with the meat or anything, I'm going to wrap it up and it's not going to contaminate the outside. The worst case, if you did happen to do that, just give it a rinse before you put it into your immersion circulator. Okay, so I have my bag ready. I've got our mix. We've got our meat here, but as I mentioned, I didn't put any salt in the marinade. I want to actually salt the meat because I think it adds a lot to the flavor and it also adds a lot to um, keeping the moisture inside the meat as it cooks. So salt is a really good seasoning. So I'm just going to spread it out here. I've got my salt mill here. Again, you don't want to use kosher salt, you know, something with a bigger grind on it. And I'm just going to liberally give it a good salting on the outside of it here. And then that's good. I just kind of put it on one side because I'm going to use my hand and kind of mix it all together here in just a second anyway. Okay. So I have my fingers here, it's touching really the inside of the bag. I secure the bag and just load it up. So I'll put about halfway, and then I'm gonna put some of my mixture in here. So you can see I've got the lime still in quarters, I've got the onions, so I'll put some more of that in, then some more meat. It's all been salted, and we just keep doing that in layers, trying to get a nice mixture in there. Okay, so in just a minute, we're going to close that up and put it into our sous vide cooker. Okay, so everything's in our bag. We just need to straighten it up here, and we're going to put it into our sous vide cooker, right, our water bath. So I'm going to try to flatten a little bit and get some of this air out first. Um, so I'm going to close it a little bit, leaving a little gap there, and then I'm going to squeeze out a lot of this air. I'm going to try to get it into a single layer here. So you can see it has the limes and the garlic and the onions and everything in here. So I've gotten a lot of this air out. And I'm gonna use the water immersion method. So I'm gonna sink the bag in, let the water force out the air, and then I'm gonna seal the bag. And I'll just put it over the edge and, and clip it. But if you have a you know vacuum sealer, you could certainly do that, which would suck all the air out and then seal it. Whatever way works for you. For you. Okay, so we have this, sealed it, got it kind of all distributed in there. Let's get it in the water and okay, start. Okay, I've got the bag here. I've got most of the air out of it. We're gonna put it into our immersion circulator. Uh, I have a uh, Coleman cooler here that I made myself for a water bath that helps insulate it. And I have my Anova cooker. You could have any brand that you want. And I'm gonna cook it at 165. Uh, about 24 hours, 30 hours, somewhere in that range. And then we're gonna look at the product at the end and I'll show it to you. Now temperatures, it's really up to you. There's a, bunch of school of thought on that and it's really going to depend what texture do you want the meat 
You know, some people are going to cook it at 145. Um, that's a lower temp. It's going to take longer. You need like 36 hours for that temperature. And the texture is going to be a little bit more like um, a steak. It's not going to pull apart as much. It's going to be chunky, which is great. Maybe you want to put it on skewers or, or grill it on as like a steak form. So that's the lower temperature. 165 is right in the middle. That's the one I prefer for this dish because it's going to pull apart. It's going to still be pretty moist. Now, it's going to take 24, 30 hours for it to cook at this temperature. Some people like to cook it at 175, 185. Now, that time is going to tenderize it a lot quicker, so you only need like 8 hours to 12 hours to cook it. But the problem with that is it's going to be a little bit more stringy, a little bit more uh, mushy. So you're going to have to decide how much time you have and uh, what texture do you want the meat to turn out at. As I mentioned, I'm doing it at 165. So let's open up our cooler here. Just open the top and twist it. And then I'm going to put the bag in, drop it in there. I've got it sealed all sides except for just this one little corner over here. And I'm going to just drop it in and push it down into the bag and let the natural process take place to make that air come out. Okay, and I'm sealing it up. Ooh, it's a little hot. I'll put your fingers in there. Use tongs if you need to. And so um, if we can. I'll bring the camera over here a little closer and you can see it hanging, though I'm going to leave this on the edge anyway. Um, come on over and can, can you move the camera right over here and they can show them this sitting in the bottom of that. Okay. Get that in there. So you can see the water is, you know, a good two, three inches over it. Uh, this, this cooler is going to keep the evaporation because it's going to cover at minimal. I'm not going to have to add any water and I can just set my timer and let it cook for 24, 36 hours, whatever I want to do, depending on the temperature, and it'll be fine. But just so this seal doesn't go under, I'm going to hold that over the edge and I'm going to shut the, the roof on it, but it's, it's definitely submerged and it's definitely cooking. Okay, it's a new day for our sous vide pork canitas today. We've been cooking this at 165 between 12 and 24 hours. So it's ready to go. Now I'm going to take it out of the bag. Now, if you're not ready to cook it, this is great to um, save. You know, take the bag out. It's got all the juice right in it. And if you're not going to use it right away, you could just plunge it into some ice water, let it cool down. Once cool, right in the bag, put it in your refrigerator. It's going to be good for a week to even longer, depending on how you're sealed the bag and the control of the bag. But you could also then, after it's cool, freeze it, save it for months, bring it out when you want, drop it back in, reheat it. So you can do this in advance. But if you are going to use it right away, what we got to do is we got to drain it. All this juice in here, we're going to drain it into a bowl and then we're going to pick out the solids. The solids I'm going to put on a rimmed baking sheet. I'm going to put under the broiler, char it, get it that crisp. And then we're going to put that inside our tortilla or however you want to use those to finish the dish. Okay, so let's do that right now. Okay, we've taken our meat, our carnitas, out of the uh, sous vide bag. We picked them out. I shredded them up a little bit with a fork, and then I put them on a rim baking sheet here and threw them under the broiler to crisp them up. You can get them as dark as you want or as light. They're good either way, but I like to have a little char on them. If you don't want to put it under the broiler, you can also do it in like a cast iron pan, really get that good heat on it. Okay, so now we're ready to build. So I have my a tortilla shell here. This is flour. You can use flour or corn, any size you want. And then your toppings, anything. Corn, cheese, lettuce, whatever you want to put in yours is up to you. I just have some different things here. So we're going to put some of our beautiful sous vide pork shoulder in here. Make a nice big one for myself. And then salsa. You could use tomatillo salsa, chard. I'm going to use some red like that. Put that in to give it flavor. And then I've got some sour cream here, which is good. I've thinned it down with a little water so it's easily spreadable. So you can almost pour it on there and get a good distribution. I like tomatoes, so I got some nice little cherry tomatoes. Some olives are good in here. All right, cheese. I like cheese. You don't have to put this. Again, refried beans, whatever you'd like. Put some of that in there. And then can't forget the lime, fresh lime. That really adds to it. You know, and then a lot of times I'll put cilantro in here or some parsley and put that in there if you'd like. Got another piece here, got to put more lime. And then all you have to do is roll it up and eat it. That's the best part. So fold this end in a little bit. 
I'm going to turn this side on here, fold it over, and that's it. Then you just got to eat. You can, again, make this, save it, use it for multiple days. Mm, so good. Thanks for watching. I hope you make this at home. I hope to see you on future videos. Thanks again. Bye now. Thank you.